Hello, everyone. Welcome to the CircuitPython weekly meeting for October 17th, 2022. This is the time of the week where we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. I'm Paul Cutler, and I'm a volunteer contributor to the CircuitPython community. What is CircuitPython? CircuitPython is a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support them and CircuitPython, please consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to adafruit.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. This meeting typically happens on Mondays at 1 p.m. Eastern, or 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, except when it coincides with a U.S. holiday. In the notes doc, there is a link to the calendar you can view online or add to your favorite calendar app. We also send notifications about upcoming meetings via Discord. If you'd like to receive these notifications, ask us to add you to the CircuitPythonistas Discord role. There is a notes doc to accompany the meeting and this recording. The notes document contains timestamps to go along with the video, so you can use the doc to view only the parts of the video that interest you the most. The meeting tends to run 45 to 60 minutes, so this gives you the option to skip around. After each meeting, we post a link for the next week's next meeting note next week's meeting notes document to the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord. Check the pinned messages to find the latest notes doc so you can add your notes for the following meeting. If you wish to participate but cannot attend, you can leave hug reports and status updates in the document for us to read during the meeting. This meeting will be held in five parts. The first part is community news. We'll take a look at all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware in the community. It's a preview of our Python on Microcontrollers newsletter. The second part is the state of CircuitPython, libraries, and Blinka. This is a statistical overview of the entire project. It's a chance to look at the project by the numbers, separate from what we're all up to. The third part is hug reports. Hug reports is an opportunity to highlight the good things folks are doing, taking the time to recognize the awesome folks in our community. The fourth part is status updates. Status updates is an opportunity to sync up on what we've all been up to. Take a couple minutes to talk about what you've been doing in the last week since the last meeting and what you'll be up to over the next week until the next meeting. And the fifth part is In the Weeds. In the Weeds is an opportunity for more long-form discussions. These discussions can come out of status updates or be something you identified ahead of time as too long for a status update. And that's how the meeting will go. All right, we'll start with community news. And the first one is the first ever Espressive Developer Conference is happening later this, later this week, and Lady Ada will be speaking. Um, you can expect over 30 talks on topics including Matter, uh, the new smart home uh, standard, Rainmaker, the SBIDF, privilege separation, and more. The next piece of news is CircuitPython 8.0 Beta 2 was released. Uh, there's a link to the full release notes, and be warned, if you're using a Raspberry Pi Pico W, the CircuitPy drive will be erased and reformatted. And you can click the full release notes to see everything that's changed since beta 1. Next up is the Python Developer Survey 2022. Share and learn about the community. Um, the survey takes about 10 to 15 minutes, and the PSF, uh, the Python Software Foundation, along with JetBrains, is behind it. Um, after the survey is over, the PSF will publish the aggregated results and randomly choose 20 winners who will each receive a $100 Amazon gift card. So let the, you know, let the Python Software Foundation know how you use Python, especially if it's CircuitPython, because um, we're part of the Python ecosystem, and it's a chance to have your voice heard. Next up is the project of the week from the, the CircuitPython weekly newsletter. Um, it's very close to 10,000 subscribers, so subscribe to the newsletter if you don't already get it and you'll see these kind of cool things. But the first one is a home-rolled HP16C calculator by Reddit user u slash some YOB. Um, it's a work in progress, includes labels for missing keys. It uses a Raspberry Pi Pico, a, a 16 by 2 LCD with le level shifters, and keypads with rows wired together to create a 40 key keypad. Learning Python along the way with Adafruit Circuit Python. Next up, River Wang writes that the alpha version of the new Circuit Python online IDE is out. 
If you want to help test it out, please visit the link that you'll see in the notes document. Um, they apologize for the GitHub repo being a little bit messy, but the IDE is going public soon. The CircuitPython weekly newsletter is a CircuitPython community-run newsletter emailed every Tuesday. You can see the complete archives online at the link in the notes doc. It highlights the latest Python on hardware related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython development. To contribute your own news or project, edit next week's draft, or submit a pull request with the changes. You may also take a tweet with the CircuitPython on Twitter or email cpnews at adafruit.com. Next up, we'll go through the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. Dan, will you take us through? Oops, I'll read the overall first. I apologize. Overall, we had 49 pull requests merged from 21 authors. Some of the new authors that look new to us are George Bow, Zoni Whoop, uh, the Debargaya. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing any of these. Uh, Mopor, Kelcut, BMO L118, and Boran Boran Roni. Um, there were seven reviewers. Thanks, Microdev, Jeffler, Gambler, Maker, Melissa, Tectric, Foamy Guy, and Dan. And 46 closed issues by 14 people and 29 new, op new issues opened by 22 people. Um, and we are in the middle of a Hectoberfest, and there were zero issues assigned the Hecto Hectoberfest label. And Dan, if you would do the core for me, please. Okay, thanks. Okay, so in the past week, we had... 30 pull requests merged, which is ridiculous. Uh, 12 authors, uh, as noted, there are some new ones. Thank you. Uh, three reviewers. We still have 14 open pull requests. Um, we've gotten a lot of the hanging on ones out of the way, and now mostly we're waiting for things that the really old ones are waiting for are, are not under our control anymore. So uh, they're there but we'll leave them open. Uh, there were 26 closed issues by seven people and 17 opened by 12 people. Uh, the, it says assigned a Hacktoberfest label to zero issues, but there are a bunch of issues that were assigned that label already. There are 574 open issues. Um, there are zero issues for 73X. There are 26 open issues for 800. We got below 30 finally. There are 12 issues for 8XX. Um, and uh, there are a bunch of other ones that are on, in other categories. So uh, we're, we're making progress on 800. And some of the issues, like uh, so there were some issues that were fixed that were either just closed or fixed. I'll talk about that later in my status report. Great. All Thank right. You. So it's looking. We are moving in a good in in a positive direction toward an 800 release eventually. Okay, I'm done. That's great to hear. Thanks, Dan. Katni, will you do the libraries? Absolutely. <clears throat> so this applies to all of the Adafruit Circuit Python libraries, which is everything that starts with Adafruit underscore Circuit Python underscore. We had 17 pull requests merged across all of those repositories uh, by nine different authors and reviewed by four different reviewers. In terms of those merged requests, uh, or I'm sorry, merged, um, yeah, merged pull requests, one, two, three, four, five of them were um, 11 days or older, including one that was over a month. So I'm really glad to see that we're still um, bouncing around in those those older PRs. Um, and obviously, based on the rest of this list, still keeping up with the new ones. Um, we have uh, 27 open pull requests at this point across um, all of those. Uh, we had 17 closed issues by 7 people and 11 opened by 10 people, uh, leaving us with 567 open issues. Um, 105 of those are labeled good first issue. If you're interested in contributing to CircuitPython on the Python side of things, head over to circuitpython.org slash contributing. You'll find all of this information and more, including open pull requests and open issues. Um, if you are interested in reviewing, uh, check out the open pull requests. These are um, places where if you have the hardware, please test it. If you don't, take a look at the code. Let us know if you see anything uh, syntactic or misspelled or so on. 
Um, and if everything looks good to you, let us know that as well. It, it really helps. Um, and the more you're comfortable with that, then we can start to talk about uh, upgrading you to the review team. If you're interested in contributing uh, code or documentation, check out the open issues. They're listed by repository alphabetically and, um, the, and, and listed out by title, so you can kind of get a feel for what one of them might be. If you're new to everything, check out Good First Issue as a label. Um, we also have a guide to contributing to CircuitPython using Git and GitHub, which uh, will help you get started if you're new to those processes. And we're always available on... Um, on Discord to help out. So we want to make sure that you can contribute in a way that works for you. And in terms of library updates in the last seven days, there are no new libraries, but there um, are a bunch of updated ones that are in the node stock and I will not read them off. And um, preemptive hug report, thank you to everybody for keeping this going while I've been gone for two weeks um, unexpectedly. So that was really nice to be able to come back and see that things ran smoothly without me being able to prepare anyone to help with that. So thanks, and uh, that's what I've got. Thanks, Katni. And now I'll turn it over to Melissa to talk about Blinka. Hello. Blinka is the CircuitPython compatibility layer for MicroPython and single board computers such as the Raspberry Pi. And this week we had um, two pull requests merged by two authors and one reviewer, uh, leaving nine open pull requests. There's actually three of these I know I bet were merged in this morning, but I think the statistics got updated before that. And uh, there were three closed issues by two people and one open by one person that says there are zero October label, Oktoberfest labels on any issues, but uh, it's actually we set it up as a topic, so any of the uh, Blinka-related ones should automatically get it. Uh, there are currently 84 open issues, and it says we have 96 supported boards, but I just added two more this morning, uh, so that should go up next week. And that's it. Awesome. Thanks, Melissa. And that is the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. Next up is Hug Reports. I've got a couple hug reports. The first one for Katni and Maker Melissa, get better soon. Um, one for Tech Trick for keeping up on Hacktoberfest and CI, even while in the middle of moving, and a group hug. Next up, I'll read one for C. Grover to Tech Trick and Mark Gambler for support of the recent community's bundle submissions. And next up is Dan H. OK. Uh, hold on. Okay, thanks to Jeff for fixing a wide variety of things, both related to the Pico W Wi Fi implementation and also many, many, many other mis miscellaneous things, which just seem to come to his head and then he has a fix immediately for them, which is great. Uh, thanks to MicroDev or for some recent ESP32 fixes of various kinds. Um, thanks to S Kerr for uh, working on some Oktoberfest issues and finding a whole bunch that could be closed without any work because they were actually already fixed. Or or uh, or moot in some way, and thanks to Dem M Walimu who noted an issue with the ESP thirty with certain ESP thirty two boards in beta dot two, which we're fixing. Okay. Thanks, Dan. Next up is DJ Devon three, who I don't believe is here today, so I'll read through those. Uh, hug report for Katni for getting COVID. Hope you feel better this week. Um, for Toddbot, for his GCA091 community library, the round displays are excellent for eye projects approaching Halloween. Gambler for porting Paint Your Dragons Monster Mask to the M4, for porting Paint Your Dragons Monster Mask code to the M4 Express, hopefully breaking out the UF2 for all future eye projects to run on any CircuitPython board. And next is Foamy Guy. All right, thanks, Paul. Um, hug report this week. Uh, thank you to C. Grover for uh, some recent additions to the community bundle, which look cool, uh, and also uh, more specifically for helping uh, save me some troubleshooting time and frustration by pointing out a false assumption I was making about breadboard rails being connected. So thanks to C. Grover. And then uh, thank you as well to Deshipu, who worked on uh, PNG support for Adafruit Image Load Library. Um, and I got back into looking at that, and that is now merged in. So if anybody is interested in trying out PNG support, um, that is in there. 
And I think that's a great addition to um, the Display.io toolkit. So uh, thanks for that. And then a group hug to everybody. Thanks. Thanks, Foamy Guy. And Jepler, you're up next. All right. Um, I just heard about this PNG support. So thank you to, <laughs> to Deshapu for implementing it and Foamy Guy for merging it. Uh, that's really cool. Anyway. So I have a whole pile of thanks. First, I want to thank Liz for testing on the Pico W and a really great guide on the Learn system. Uh, check that out if you haven't already. It shows a lot of ways that you can use the Pico W to do stuff online. Um, thank you, Paul, for hosting this meeting. I guess you've hosted once before, but I was out or something. So this is the first time around. You're doing great. Um, and we hope to have you back many times. Uh, these are some uh, GitHub usernames. Uh, Georg Bo on GitHub for fixing a Pico W bug that made MQTT work. That was reported by two users, uh, including Liz. To Dan H for another new release with so many good things in it and a couple of troubles, but uh, you know. To Bill ADAT for picking up another Pico W bug and Biffo Bear for reporting and testing it. This has to do with um, losing the USB connection while the board is uh, connecting to Wi Fi. To Tectric, I'm excited to see the actions improvements itching towards completion. And to DJ Devon 3, I love seeing your projects as they morph in the course of time. Remember to send them to ugh, send them to the newsletter when they get done. And that's what I've got. Thanks, Jeff. Katni, you're up next. I was about to go do something else in the notes doc and realize no, I need to scroll back up. It's time. Um, okay, so uh I've been out for a couple weeks, if that wasn't obvious. Um, I have a hug report to fill in the more for being so supportive. I had plenty to worry about, but not being able to work was not one of them. To my partner, Rose, for helping out so much while also being sick because she was doing better than I was. And to friends and family for support over the last two weeks. Um, to Tammy for chatting with me on the first day I was able to sit up for any period of time. To maker Melissa, I hope you make it through having COVID in the house completely uneventfully. Um, in a more, uh, technical situation, um, thanks to foamy guy for helping me with a Python script. I had part of it figured out, but I couldn't sort out parsing an RSS feed and generating a dynamic string based on three pieces of information from the feed. Tim had it sorted out in 20 minutes. Um, super helpful. Uh, thanks to Tectric for always being up for library infrastructure tasks. Um, I come up with a lot of arbitrary stuff and, uh, Alec is always, uh, excited to do it. Um, thanks to everyone here for keeping everything going while I was out. I said that earlier during the library section, but I um, want to say it again. It's uh, both um, nice and sometimes disconcerting how well things run um, without me around, um, which really is the way you want to do things. You want to build a thing so that you're not the you know single point of failure. You, you want it to run without you. And... Um, this community is utterly amazing and obviously kept everything going uh, very smoothly. Um, and a group hug. Thanks, Katni. Next up is Liz, who's meeting the, missing the meeting, so I'll read them for her. Jeff for his work on the Pico W and linking the issue that was causing problems with Azure. Dan for the UF2 for testing the Pico W fixes and releasing the new beta. And a group hug. And Maker Melissa, you're up next. Uh, I want to give a hug to Dan H for fixing the tests on the CircuitPython PR I made to fix folders being able to move inside themselves. And a hug to Katni for hopefully getting over COVID soon and a group hug to everyone else. All right, I'll read the next few. The first one is from Mark, AKA Gambler. He has a hug report for Paint Your Dragon for such amazing code. I keep finding myself modifying your projects and learning from them in a group hug. And next one is from Microdev, who is text only. They have a group hug and a hug for Jepler for chained exception pull request. One for Dan H for testing and figuring out the bug in issue number 7070. Naradoc and M. Wallamu for testing issue number 7060. Next up is Tammy Makes Things, who is also text only. Um, hug for Katni for a great conversation. Hug for me, Paul. Tectric and everyone else helping with the CircuitPython community help desk in a group hug. Next up is Tectric, who is text only. Hug for Katni for all the good chats. 
Jepler for pigging me on a neat failure that happened in the CI. Always appreciate interesting problems. Another one for Jepler again, because I haven't thanked them for all the awesome work on the Pi Cow. I'm very excited to get my hands on one and start tinkering. Hug report for Mark Gambler for reviewing all my Hacktoberfest PRs. And a hug for my girlfriend, who, while not a CircuitPython user yet, did move all of my electronics, as well as everything else we own, into our new home. And a group hug. All right, next up is status updates. Status updates is our time to sync up on what we're doing. I will start, and we'll go through the list alphabetically to give everyone a chance to participate. When I call on you, take a couple of minutes to talk about what you've been doing since the last meeting and what you'll be up to until the next meeting. This is also an opportunity to provide tips and tricks relevant to what people are working on. If a discussion becomes too much for status updates, we can move it to in the weeds. Um, so last week, I interviewed Joey Castillo for an upcoming podcast episode. Um, folks will know him from a lot of his pr products that use CircuitPython, like the, the LCD Featherwing. Um, this week, uh, this morning, a new episode of the CircuitPython show with Jim Muzzered of MicroPython came out today. It's great to talk with an upstream developer. And then on a personal note, I get my stitches out of my hand from my surgery a couple weeks ago tomorrow, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, status update. The next one is for C. Grover, who's text only. Last week, submitted AD5245 digital potentiometer driver and AD9833 programmable waveform generator drivers, as well as Shadow Watcher and Punk Console helper classes to the community bundle. This week, we'll wrap up the current round of community bundle submissions with the PMSA 003i AQI calculator with a number of translations, the SCD 30 CO2 indoor air quality calculator, daylight savings time detector and adjuster, timer is our, timing is everything, an Ohm's law calculator, a music helper li library, MIDI note number to note name and note to frequency, and descriptive MIDI CC decoder a dew point calculator, and a heat index calculator. Future, planning to revamp the Cedar Grove widgets collection to take full advantage of vector display graphics and drop the support for display size independence. The widgets include an animated kitchen scale, LED multi-digit bubble displays, think HP 35, and emulations of a 65 Magic Eye, NeoPixel strip, and LED bar graph integrated circuit. Wrapped up this year's landscaping with a three and a half bag concrete project. It was nice to play in the mud again. Recently learned and was amused to hear that over 30 years ago, my son used to sneak handfuls of wet concrete from my patio and mowing strip projects to sculpt a secret rock collection. That's pretty cute. Um, Dan, you're next up. Okay, so as mentioned, I released 800 Beta 2 last Friday, mostly this it was a whole bunch of important changes, including Pico W, but um, it turns out it was, so that was mostly really good. There were, it turns out a couple of board families basically stopped working altogether, or at least partly. ESP32 C3 boards just boot loop, and some ESP32 boards, mostly older ones, also don't work. And those, we thought that the cause was the same, but it's actually different. So we have a fix for the latter. Uh, thanks for working. Microdev for working with me on that. And um, the C3 issue is caused by uh, ESP IDF updating the version of the compiler that they're using. And there are no code changes that are causing this issue. So that's going to be difficult to figure out. It could be like the compiler is compiling code in a different way. And so some uninitialized variable has a different uninitialized value or it could just be that there's a bug in the compiler. So we'll need to check on that. Um, there was this issue of junk from stuff that was being printed out by CircuitPython getting back into the REPL, which was really confusing. How could that happen? Because it's out, like output going back into the input. And Jeff figured out that on Linux, there's something called echo mode. When you open a serial port, uh, it will echo stuff that comes in back to the output, its output, um, until you turn that off. All terminal programs basically turn that off up front. Um, but uh, there's a window of time where that doesn't happen. There's a race condition. 
So I put in a delay at a certain point, and the issue seems to be mostly fixed now, uh, it, which is makes the pieces of the status bar not appear as often. And also, it's fixed, it's fixed on the NRF, which had its, was also had sort of an even worse uh, manifestation of that. I did a whole bunch of reviews. Um, so for the coming week, I will work on the ESP32 C3 compiler issue to try to figure out what's really going on. I still have a bunch of outstanding PRs to review, and I will continue working on 800 issues as usual. And I will do a beta 3 really soon to get the broken ESP32 boards running again and to get in some new Pico W fixes. So expect that within the next day or two. If I can't figure out the ESP32 C3 issue, I won't bother to include a fix for that in there. Okay. Thanks, Dan. Next up is DJ Devin 3 who's missing the meeting, so I'll read through some of his cool projects. Purchase some arcade buttons from the Adafruit store to use as reset buttons on all my S2 and S3 boards dealing with the hard reset bug. Hours later, the core devs fixed the hard reset bug. Still added a reset button to my social media account counter out of principle, even though it's really no longer needed. Still working on adding the Twitter API for the social media tracker? Dealing with Twitter's OAuth has, still, has been a major headache compared to YouTube. I'm trying to add all the APIs using only the request library and avoiding using portal base to maximize board compatibility. Created a YouTube video on my new channel called Devon's Workshop featuring a complete build of Adafruit's Trinket M0 NeoPixel Goggle Kit for CircuitPython. Video includes a lot of soldering, updating the Trinket M0 bootloader, and installing CircuitPython 8.0 Beta 2. Added a bug report for the Protomatter matter library as it's not playing nice with the UM Feather S3 and RGB Matrix Featherwing. I tried everything I had to get it to work, it's just over my head. Got two GCA091 round displays running some eyes code from Toddbot. That cut my development time by a huge margin and was easily able to get a working demo within minutes. I plan on adding it to a new Dragon Skull mask purchased for Halloween. This week I'll be working on turning the human eyes into lizard eyes. Will the displays fit in the goggles? Yes, but I actually want to wear the mask for Halloween so the projects are separate. It's a neat idea for Lars or other stuffed animals to combine those two projects. If I finish with the eyes project in Twitter API early this week, I'd love to get back to the LoRa Messenger project. I'm really excited to work with long range communication boards. And next up is Foamy Guy. All right. Uh, last week, I worked on testing out the uh, new Wi-Fi functionality in the Pico W. Uh, belated additional hug report to Jeff uh, for the work on that. It's going really nice so far. Um, one of the things that I worked on, uh, so I did some stuff in requests. I also did some HTTP server examples. Um, and I found all the basic stuff working. I started building out a trivia game, because uh, there's a free trivia API that returns JSON to you, so it's a nice thing to test with. Uh, I started building out a trivia game for that, and on the Pico W, I found uh, an upper limit of the size uh, that it seems like it will return successfully. Um, I tested the same thing on ESP32 S2, and it does seem to be able to return larger files in that environment, on that port, I guess. Um, and I have the example script, and I have the sizes and everything documented, so I'll make a PR with uh, everything I found on that, hopefully later on today. Um, kind of evolving from there, I started working on uh, display IO uh, with the Pico W for the first time, basically trying to build out a different way to make the trivia program. So the previous one was using HTTP server. So a person would play it um, either on a PC or on their phone from the browser. Uh, the new one though is only on a single device. It's all self-contained. You play it on the display. And it has a Neo key one by four where you can press the buttons because lots of the trivia are multiple choice with four answers. Um, so I've got the screen set up and I've got the Neo key set up and the uh, drivers and everything are working for all of those. Um, I still intend to go back and kind of build out the rest of the trivia game to have it ask the questions and let you answer it with the buttons. Um, this week, I so far today, I should say, I was uh, working for a little while trying to get my core repo fixed up. Uh, it seemed at some point along the way, I lost the ability to make the docs with make HTML. Uh, I think it's a something to do with having an older version of Python. I have 3.8, and I'm thinking maybe that one's not supported anymore. 
started updating some stuff. Um, and I think I did actually get a successful build just a few minutes ago. So uh, fingers crossed, I need to look into it a bit more, but I think we might be uh, in the clear now. Um, I also tested out the that PNG uh, support PR for image load. Um, I had tested out that out in the past, but it was on the uh, the hack tablet, which was a bit of a more non-standard device. So I went back and did it on a, a Feather TFT, just basic device, um, pared everything down to the absolute most basics and just got a nice simple test for it. And then submitted a follow-up PR for that uh, with typing and with that simple test example included in it. Uh, and then on a sort of more personal note, uh, this week, uh, in particular, tomorrow night is my last uh, class, at least for a little while. So uh, hopefully I'll have some more time in the evenings um, that I can start getting back into CircuitPython stuff coming up soon. That's what I got. Thank you. Thank you. Jepler, you're up next. All right. Um, so a belated hug report to Lamore for teasing the first cowbell in uh, her live show on Sunday night. It's a great name, if I do say so myself. Anyway, what I've been up to last week was Pico W bug squashing, uh, some flash size savings PRs that let Dan put in a, a nice functional addition. So I was excited about that. I reviewed some PRs. I prototyped chained exceptions for CircuitPython, which makes raise X from Y work more like standard Python and give you more information about the problems that occurred. I chased down several async IO problems and PR'd fixes. And I, uh, based on a report from Liz, there was what looked like a Pico W bug, but it was a bug in the .env module. And I chased that down and fixed it. I fixed some warnings within the CircuitPython build due to the use of deprecated GitHub Actions features. There may be more to do, though. Um, there's a certain construct. They decided it's not a good construct. And so you have to change your actions or update to newer versions of actions to resolve it. And last thing is I PR to change so that we run the async IO tests against Adafruit CircuitPython async IO during the CI process and find problems earlier. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, this is subsequent to actually fixing those problems enough that this would work and not just fail. Anyway, uh, so this week, another classic keyboard was added to my list of keyboard projects. This is an Atari 8-bit era keyboard. I've been reading about them. And they are weird. They have a freaky way that seems to connect up to 72 keys using just eight IO pins, uh, but in a way that won't work with key matrix. And this is all based on online reading. So we'll find out how this project goes. And another project that is not for CircuitPython is I'm going to try building Doom for the Feather ESP32 S3 based on some code that is on GitHub that works on another ESP32 S3 um, device. We just thought it would be fun to show that off running, uh, not a CircuitPython thing, but fun retro gaming thing. And that's what I've got. And I'll probably do something else that's not on this list and not do half these things. You know how I am. Thanks, Jeff. And I agree. Seeing Doom run on that would be fun. All right, Katni, you're up next. I am up next. All right. So last week and the week before, I was out. I caught COVID. Um, I'm working on sharing uh, that situation on my blog if you're interested. Um, which is at uh, catney.com. Uh, this week, I have a ton of catch up. Uh, if you're on that list and you know it, please reach out to me to make sure I get to it. Um, I am working still on the LTR 303 slash 329 guide. Um, the plan is to basically just focus on that. And then uh, I have a huge list of further um, new learn pages and guides. The plan is to finish the LTR guide and then revisit that list and make a decision on what's next at that point. Um, that way I'm not trying to do a bunch of things at once. And if I talk to you about doing a thing, please don't hesitate to reach out and ping me. I am absolutely certain that I have forgotten things I talk to folks about. Um, I you know, forget what I say like 10 minutes later at the moment. So uh, if, if you're blocked on me or if we talked about a thing or whatever, um, for whatever reason, please, f please feel free to reach out to me. Um, it's much better if you let me know that I've missed something um, than to let it go uh, undone. 
So for for any of these contexts, if there's anything in the last couple weeks, or obviously in the weeks before that that we talked about, um, please let me know so I can make sure it's on my list. That would be greatly appreciated. Um, and that is uh, that is all I have for this week. Thanks, Katni. Now I'll turn it over to Maker Melissa. Hello. Let's see where am I in the deck? Oh yes. Yeah. Uh, last week I finished updating the TensorFlow on Raspberry Pi Four guide to work with Bullseye and the latest Pi Hammer Two. I updated the associated RPI Vision library, which currently has a PR waiting, so it's kind of broken at the moment. Um, I fixed up a few miscellaneous GitHub issues. Uh, I added some missing boards to CircuitPython.org, and I tested out a text-to-speech library to see a text-to-speech library to see if it would work for future projects. Uh, this week, I am going to I'm finishing updating screenshots on the code editor learn guide, and finally working on the guide for the Clue robot I made for Circuit Python Day. And with COVID now in the household, it's uncertain how it feels. The week goes on, but I'm trying to get as much done as I'm feeling okay so far. And that's it. Thanks. I hope you continue to feel okay. Next up is Tammy Makes Things, who's text only, so I'll read those. Last week, rebuilt my Linux VM, which had mysteriously stopped working, so I can once again build CircuitPython. Installed the new beta version of Loopback, a Mac OS utility which I think, hope, will fix the OBS audio issues I was having with the Mac OS Ventura beta. This week, getting ready to go out of town for birthday festi festivities. My birthday is Friday, so probably not a lot of CircuitPython stuff happening this week or next week. Non-CircuitPython fun? I scored an HP 200LX, and the link is in the doc, an old DOS-based palm top computer from the early 90s on eBay, and got Turbo C, Turbo Pascal, and Turbo Assembler installed on it so I can hack stuff on the go. I wanted one of these so badly when they were new, but they were just too expensive, and I'm excited to get one in my collection now. It's astounding to compare this hardware, which had 80C186 running at 7.9 megahertz with one meg of RAM to a Raspberry Pi Pico that's one one hundredth of the cost. Happy birthday to you. And next up is Textrick, who is te text only. Last week, moving, moving, and more moving, finished all my Hacktoberfest PRs, reviewing incoming PRs as I found the time, finalized the unified composite actions for the CircuitPython libraries, working on the build and py action was a huge help in personal projects my circuit python i can't say hanukkah for some reason with circuit python circuit python hanukkah project is now oshawa certified thanks to cern for fantastic license options for hardware also in personal projects my circlink CL, uh, cli tool for writing code locally and having it auto push to circuit python boards as it's modified is pretty fleshed out and ready for use hoping to use it for testing some PRs next week. This week and upcoming, probably the last light week as I unpack everything and get the last few things out of the old place, hoping to ramp back up possibly as early as the end of the week, planning an end of Hacktoberfest review on October 31st. And after checking with the Hacktober Discord, I'll add the Hacktoberfest accepted label to any PR submitted at or before that time so they count, even if changes need to be made the PR will still count, so please don't let that prevent a submission. Following through with the unified li library CI workflows, and lastly, odds and ends while planning where to start next week. Thank you everyone for your status updates. Next up is In the Weeds, and I will turn it over to Katni. Thanks, Paul. So I just wanted to put this out there. I will be working on the graphic for the CircuitPython Community Help Desk over the next couple weeks. I have ideas, but I wanted to put it out here so anyone else with ideas or suggestions can collaborate. Please send me ideas via email at catney at adafruit.com as messages can get lost on Discord. If you're up for it, sketches are welcome. I'm hoping to work with our graphics person to get a few ideas sketched out before we finalize anything. And if that happens that way, I will be sure to share um, all the progress uh, with everybody as we go. And either way, once it's in the hands of our amazing graphics person, it's going to come out great. It always does. Um, it's just a question of whether I can um, come up with uh, enough of an explanation to get what's in my head explained 
to uh to our graphics person um but i would say 99 percent of the time even when i think i haven't explained something well uh bruce produces something perfectly wonderful so i'm not all that concerned about it but i just wanted to let everybody know that that's um in the works it's been in the works but i just haven't obviously had time but since it seems to uh seems to be continuing um i want to make sure that we've got something that we can uh use as a as a youtube thumbnail and also as a you know for for blog posts and in the newsletter and all that stuff so that will be a thing very soon i hope and uh that's my topic awesome thank you so if you have any ideas make sure you email katney and the last up for In the Weeds is Mark uh, Gambler, whose text only asks, um, oops. Uh, has anyone done any performance on display I.O. speeds? Really more interested in whether it's worth me poking at. I think that there are probably some speed ups to be had. Um, a long time ago, I had a conversation with Scott about that, and he said, well, you know, his goal was really getting it functional and it didn't ever get that performance optimization step. So kind of, I, I haven't really started on any of it. So if you have ideas or want to dive in and figure out how to profile, oh, and Deshapu did look at some things briefly. So I will step aside and let Deshapu say if they have some particular ideas. But yeah, I, I also wish that it would be speedier and I don't think it's really had a look at the performance super close. Anyone else have any comments on that? All right, well then we'll wrap it up. This has been the CircuitPython weekly meeting for October 17th, 2022. Thank you to everyone who participated. If you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython and those that work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will be available on major podcast services. It will also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. The next meeting will be held next Monday as usual at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. The meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord, which you can join by going to adafruit.it slash discord. To be notified about the meeting and any changes to the date, time or day, you can ask to be added to the CircuitPythonistas role on Discord. We hope to see you all next week. Thanks, everyone.